Okay, so let's take a look at these uh, super high-tech tools <laughs> that I uh, use for this. Obviously a hammer. Um, and then in order to fixture the blade and not have to hold on to the knife with one hand and a hammer with the other, this this is the sort of the foundation. This is a the the fixture to, to securely hold the knife while we're doming the pin and it gets held right here. This is just a piece of heavy flat bar and it's got another piece of heavy flat bar that I welded on uh, at 90 degrees and then another piece of uh, heavy bar stock that is attached to that with two uh, quarter 20 machine screws. This is, as you can tell, this is not a precision instrument. The the knife is held in, in here by the Ricasso and you do one side and then you flip it over to touch up the other side. I mean, you know, this is this is pretty sloppy. I don't have you know dowel pins or anything like that in here. It's it just has to securely hold the blade. It's more important that this is oversized and beefy like this than it be a precision tool. And then to support the the pin while we're hammering on the the top side of it, I made this little adjustable post anvil is really what it amounts to. It's just a a heavy block of bar stock. This is the same size that the KMG tooling arms are. I've got a, a 3 8 16 stainless steel bolt that, that I, I drilled and tapped the hole in here for so it threads down in there. Um, and I've got a lock washer and a nut and then I put this little sliding T-handle through here like, like you see on a C-clamp just so I would have uh, I'd need one less wrench to use this thing. And then as you can tell, I rounded the bolt head off and polished it. Now, something that comes up on the forum sometimes is this topic right here. I, I used a diamond burr and I put a little cupped divot right there. And it's really not necessary. Um, I, I mean, it doesn't hurt anything. But the main thing is that you want to you want to round, round this head of this bolt off like I did here and polish it because you only want this thing to be making contact with the end of your pin. If this is raised up and making contact, the bolt head is making contact with your handle, you're going to mar your handle up. And then something that I added just I guess within the last year, I drilled two flat bottom holes in here and I super glued two rare earth magnets in there. And the reason for that um, if you raise this this bolt up, the little post anvil, if you raise this up to support the the bottom side of the pin, if you jack this thing up high enough that it's pushing the knife uh, real hard so that it's holding this in place, I think you're exerting a lot of forces on the knife that just aren't necessary. But so to help me just sort of keep this in place, those magnets, and it's not anything crazy. I mean, I break it free pretty easily but it's uh it just helps keep it where I want it and then moving on these were very much based on Mr. John White's um, teachings over the phone I went to the hardware store and I got a set of four <laughs> relatively inexpensive nail sets now in the four years since then I've made a few punches myself but I always go back and use these so um, you know stick with what works um, the the two that I use hands down the most are these ones and uh, they're just I, I rounded ground the ends down and rounded them off and then put a mirror polish on them now this one it it might look pointy on here but it's not it's um, about a sixteenth of an inch at the end and just no sharp edges it's nicely polished then and this is for pinpointing uh, your force on and then for just the general mushrooming of, of the pin is this one and this one's closer to an eighth inch on the end same thing rounded over mirror polished no sharp edges now just for S's and G's, I'll explain these two. These I thought were this brilliant idea that I had. I took a, a diamond uh, spherical burr 
and I made these so that they uh, they're cupped on the end and my my thought process was that this once you got the pin close you could use these to dial in the shape and in theory it works okay in application uh, not so much <laughs> um, it's very easy because you you have a sharp edge because of this being cupped you have a fairly sharp edge around there and so if you if you can't this just a little bit too much when you're going around the pin that sharp edge will cut right into your handle material and it'll leave a halo around your pin which looks like crap we don't want to do that so um, I was I almost wasn't even going to show these just because I, I don't want people to uh, to do that and be mad at me but I do use them on occasion but very very rarely and then um, another thing I use is a uh, a Kratex knife edge wheel now of course we need a rotary tool um, I'm fortunate to have a uh, a, a Fordham, which most people kind of refer to as a, a Dremel on steroids, um, but a Dremel will work fine. The the Fordham just has uh, more control. So um, use that, and then I'll, we hit it on the buffer real quick. But anyway, um, those are the those are the tools. So obviously nothing high tech. It's all pretty straightforward. And uh, yeah, let's get going. Everything on this knife is done now except for the pin and then going around the doing the final satin finish around the perimeter of the guard. But like I say everything else is done. Now I'm kinda kinda made a liar out of myself. I made this thing, which wasn't really all that necessary, but I made it when I was playing around when I got my, my bigger lathe. But it's it's just a handle to hold this and this is a, a tapered cone, a diamond burr, just about any tapered cone burr um, shaped like this is going to work fine and I just want to put a little bit of a relief in the outer edges of this this hole and so basically I'm just letting the weight of this thing go down and then I'm twisting it to to cut a little bit of a relief in there ream out the end of that hole and, and that'll allow a little bit of room for that pin to swell just some just a little and you decrease your chances of this hand of material cracking so then the next thing we need to do is take our pin stock and I like 416 just because that's what I use for my guards and stuff uh, I would recommend if you've never done this and you're wanting to try it that you you do some practice stuff first and try either brass or nickel silver because they'll move much easier with the hammer blows and polish out easier um, the 416 isn't real bad it's just stiffer than those are so uh, it's just 416 uh, 16th inch pin stock and the very first thing I do is take it over to a 320 grit belt or or disc on a disc center and just run a nice little chamfer around that and then take it over and put a mirror polish on the end of it on the buffer